Labour, good afternoon to you. Welcome to BBC News. In the last few minutes, an international team of astronomers have revealed they have detected traces of a gas in the atmosphere of Venus that could possibly indicate signs of life on the planet. They say that there could be another explanation for the presence of the phosphane gas, but so far they haven't been able to come up with an alternative theory. Here's our science correspondent, Palab Ghosh. Venus. Could it be home to extraterrestrial life? There's new evidence that it might be. Astronomers have discovered a gas called phosphine in the planet's atmosphere. They think it could have been produced by tiny living microbes in the clouds. I was really surprised. I was pretty shocked as well. And at first, I didn't quite believe the detection. I just couldn't believe that we'd found it. But then once we set out and independently detected it through another telescope, that's when I knew we really had a solid detection of phosphine through two telescopes and, and that it was real. Confirmation of the detection was made using the ALMA telescope. In the mountains of the Atacama Desert in Chile, it's one of the most powerful arrays ever built. It found large amounts of phosphine across most of the planet. The researchers think that if it's been produced by living organisms, they're still there. The discovery of life on another world would be one of the greatest scientific discoveries ever made. But the researchers aren't making that claim, at least not yet. The gas could have been produced by some other means, but its presence on Venus is still a sensational finding. It's the strongest evidence that astronomers have ever had for the existence of alien life. The scientist leading the study told me she can't think of any other way that phosphine could have been produced other than by life. Everything we've tried, like maybe it's puffed out by volcanoes or um, brought in by meteors or bits of grit blow up from the surface and then have some chemical reaction. None of those things work. So I think we're excited because phosphine is really distinctive. It's something we know life can make and we know other mechanisms can't readily make on Venus. The big problem, though, is Venus is hostile to life. A Soviet spacecraft landing in 1982 confirmed scorching temperatures up to 460 degrees Celsius and clouds of concentrated sulfuric acid able to disintegrate any living thing in seconds something that even here life could be possible as you go higher up through the atmosphere just as you do on earth climbing a mountain it gets cooler and cooler so there is a habitable zone a, a range of altitudes on venus where it's not too hot and not too acidic that life that we understand here on earth so-called extremophile life extremely hardy survival superhero type cells could survive that environment in the Venusian clouds. Many scientists still think that the conditions on the planet are too harsh to support life and that there's another explanation for the presence of the gas. But at this stage, it's hard to completely rule out the possibility that alien life might exist on one of our nearest planets. Palab Ghosh, BBC News. Well, let's go live now to Cardiff, where uh, scientists are explaining more about their findings. Professor Jane Greaves of Cardiff University and colleagues are talking right now. Let's listen in. Um, then the pressure is much like it is at the surface of the Earth, and the temperature is quite nice, maybe up to about 30 centigrade or 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's been hypothesised that this is a living habitat today. So I originated a project in 2016 to see if we could look, deliberately look for phosphine as a possible signature of living organisms in the high clouds of Venus. Okay, so we started with the James Clark Maxwell Telescope in Hawaii, which is operated by the East Asia Observatory, and the UK is a long-term member of the other partners there. We also then went on to use the ALMA network of telescopes down in Chile. That's operated by Europe, North America, Japan, and other partners. And I should mention, if you've got technical questions about our observations, I'm the expert on JCMT data, and Anita Richards is on an audio link to answer everything about ALMA. Okay. So what were we looking for? 
So Venus is a natural... Well, we'll uh, leave that news conference as it continues and talk to Dr Emily drabeck Maunder now, who's an astronomer at the Royal Observatory Greenwich and part of the team behind all of this work and joins us now from uh, Greenwich. Thank you so much for being with us. Just explain then in layman's terms, if you can, uh, what, what, what do you think you've found and, and how exciting potentially it could be? So what we think we found is phosphine gas in the atmosphere of Venus. Now on a rocky planet like the Earth, phosphine is a rare gas and it's mainly the result of life. Um, so it's what we call a biosignature. Now on the Earth, uh, phosphine is caused by human activity, so through industry or through microorganisms or microbes. And so finding a gas like this on Venus is really exciting because of the possibility that it could have also been produced by life like it is on the Earth. OK, and uh, just explain to us again how exactly you have found that this gas is present there, this phosphine gas. So we used telescopes in order to search for the gas. Um, we first uh, observed uh, phosphine gas with the James Clerk Maxwell Telescope, or the JCMT, in Hawaii. And um, it was actually quite a shock when we found it. When, when we originally set out to do the study, we didn't know if we would actually find the gas. And then actually finding it, it, it was just a, a really big surprise. Uh, we then confirmed that observation with another telescope, the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, or ALMA. And that actually let us uh, search for where the phosphine was coming from in the atmosphere as well. So we used those two telescopes to find the phosphine. And uh, you said uh, that this kind of gas, it, it, it's a biosignature, if you like, so it, it's an indicator of possible life. Could there, though, be other explanations as to its presence? Absolutely. So at this point in time, we've not been able to explain the amount of phosphine gas we find in the atmosphere um, from what we currently know about Venus. So we can look at ways that sunlight interacts with Venus's atmosphere, we can try to explain the phosphine gas through possible volcanoes on the surface or through even lightning in the atmosphere. But it, it just it, those processes don't make enough phosphine gas. So what that means is that we have to start thinking outside the box for other explanations. So phosphine could be produced through some sort of other chemical or geological process that no one knows about on Venus, or there could be a biological origin. Um, so life could be producing the gas. OK, and tell us more about then that biological origin. Uh, when, when, we, when we talk about possible indicator of life, what kind of life are we talking about? So um, the life we're talking about is not complex, intelligent life. Um, we've pretty much ruled out uh, complex and intelligent life in other places in our solar system. So we're not talking about little green men or anything like that. Uh, the type of life we're talking about is more subtle. And so things like microorganisms or microbes, and those would exist um, in the clouds of Venus. So it would be some sort of aerial life that we would be trying to, to detect. But even if it were true that it was microorganisms or microbes, how significant would that be, do you think, as a discovery in terms of its implications for, you know, for the rest of space? Uh, so I think that would be a huge discovery. So we would have found another place in our solar system where life developed independently. And what that really means is that we have two, if we have two places in our solar system with life, then life is probably a lot more common than what we thought it was. And so there's going to be life in other solar systems in our galaxy as well. But I mean, just to sum up, a potentially a hugely exciting discovery. Absolutely, yes. So, I mean, it's, it's definitely what should be taken from this study is that it should make everyone a little more hopeful that we're moving in the right direction for finding life in other places, whether that be on Venus or elsewhere um, in our universe by searching for these gases like phosphine. Great to talk to you. Uh, beautifully explained. Even I understood what you're talking about there. Uh, <laughs> Emily, thank you very much indeed. Dr. Emily drabeck Maunder, astronomer at the Royal Observatory Greenwich. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, you can see more on that uh, very exciting discovery on Sky at Night. That's tonight at half past ten on BBC Four. Well, here on Earth, the uh, rule of six has come into force today in different forms across the United Kingdom in an effort to tackle rising...